the businessmen looked at me like a mathematician, and the mathematicians looked at me like a businessman. So I felt fine. I mean, uh, I, I could be one of the mathematicians. I could be one of the businessmen. Uh, but each group, I think, saw me as something unusual because uh, part of the other group. So, uh, My father uh, left school in the eighth grade. He sold movies for 20th Century Fox, trying to convince theater owner to take this movie versus that movie. So there were no, there was nothing obvious in my background that would say, ah, yeah, still be a mathematician. I just liked it, you know. I just liked it. When I was about three, I learned that a car could run out of gas. And I thought to myself, if you only used half of what was left, and then you used half of that, and half of that, you would never run out of gasoline. Of course, it didn't occur to me that also you wouldn't really get anywhere, but in principle, you would always have some gasoline because you only took half. So that's a sort of a mathematics concept, an infinite series, if you like, of and then the decreasing amounts of gasoline. So I thought about things like that. I thought about... You were three. Three or maybe four. I was very little. I was very little. Beauty is very difficult to define, of course, but it's a word that mathematicians use very often, and they know what they mean. Each other knows what he means. I remember talking to a very young man I was 18 and he was 19 and we were on a street corner at night and I ran into him. He already had a reputation of being a, a very brilliant student and I guess he knew who I was and we started to talk and he asked me what I was learning and I said, well, I was just studying a Galois theory based on the work of the famous French mathematician and he stood back and he said, oh, isn't it beautiful? And it was and I knew immediately what he meant and I was only, uh, say, 18 years old. Uh, and, but it was, and it is, a very beautiful theory. And uh, so even then, there was a shared notion of what was beautiful. And I enjoy collaboration. My most famous paper, written in the early 70s, was in a collaboration with Chern, he and I working together. Moi, j'ai passé mon été 73 à calculer pour Jim ce qu'on appelle la variation seconde de la variante de Chern-Simons. Simons était en train de développer la théorie qu'on appelle le Chern-Simons et qui qu enfin, qu lui a valu de la célébrité, l'impact qu'elle a eu en physique. Et, et après, depuis, c'est devenu, pour les physiciens, Chern-Simons, CS, c'est toujours Chern-Simons. J'ai fait des mathématiques pour... Well, I started, let's say, at 17 and stopped about 20 years later in my late 30s. I was very frustrated at that point in mathematics. I was very frustrated. I had been working on a set of problems for about two years and couldn't get anywhere. There was another side to my personality. There was, a, I had another, I was, uh, I was interested in making money. I liked that. I, I liked reading the newspaper and trying to figure out, you know, where this economy was going on that one, and placing bets and in, investing uh, some money. So I just stopped doing mathematics and started doing that and built this company. I started alone, and uh, but I soon realized that some of these things could be modeled, and I hired mathematicians and uh, physicists and computer scientists because they were good thinkers about building models. So gradually, it took 10 years from 1978 to 1988 before we completely transitioned. By 1988, it was 100% models. I didn't imagine that. Uh, I didn't imagine making as much money as we did, uh, but I did imagine that it could be a success. 
and it would be very interesting. And it was very, it was interesting, it was fun, and uh, obviously it was profitable. Avec cet argent, il en fait autre chose, il fait des choses qui lui tiennent à cœur. Une partie importante de son mécénat sont tournées vers le monde des mathématiciens, mais aussi vers l'éducation, puisqu'il y a aussi une fondation qui s'appelle Math for America. C'est lui qui en a eu l'idée, c'est lui qui a mis toute la somme de base, et il continue à mettre des sommes très importantes dans Math for America. Well, we're supporting math and science around the world, primarily in the United States, but it's basic research. Most of our philanthropy is for basic research, and it's not necessarily in math, in uh, biology, medicine, and I think, you know, we're making a difference. I think in the end, deep down, I feel more like a mathematician than I do like a businessman. But I'm all obviously unusual in that community and and I can feel that too and uh, certainly in the business community I'm unusual and can feel that so uh, so there it is that's that's my life